Hello, math humans. We're going to do the last section for chapter 1, 1.6b. We're going to be doing inverse trig functions, finding measures of angle, solving trig equations graphically, and then lastly, trig compositions. So remember, just as we get started, that 1 to 1 means a function passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, so it passes both, and it means that the inverse is a function. We use that information as we try to do our inverse trig functions, okay? Trig functions themselves, their inverses are not a function, and so we are going to restrict the domain to force one to one. Otherwise, they would not be um, they would not be one to one. Your book has a great example of all of the individual graphs, and in the interest of time, I chose not to graph them, but to talk about the different places and their locations. So you might want to go back and look at those graphs. All right. If you see find inverse trig, so trig to the negative 1 of x, that notation means find the angle, okay? We also have those buttons on your calculator. So if I have the tangent, I know the angle, and then I put that angle in, and it tells me the ratio. Up above is the inverse tangent, and that says here is the ratio, find the angle. Okay, so that's what that notation means. Because we have to restrict the domain, then that means that our trig functions have restrictions. So inverse sine is going to be restricted to quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Okay, that's an and, it's not divided by the inverse cosine of x is going to be restricted to, I'm going to put restricted to, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. And then the inverse tangent is going to be restricted to the same as sine, quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So I always sketch and think about Sine is limited to 1 and 4, cosine is 1 and 2, and tangent is also 1 and 4. For sine and tangent, I get this rotation or this rotation. I don't get to go all the way around. So for sine and tangent, it's just the positive and negative rotation on the right-hand side of the circle. Cosine is the top half of the circle. And then the reciprocals match the original functions. So if I have inverse oops, CSC, it's going to be the same as inverse sine. Inverse secant is going to be the same as cosine, and inverse cotangent is going to be the same as tangent. Okay? All right, so let's just jump in with a couple of examples. Okay? First example. I'm running out of paper, that's a bummer. It says find the measure of the inverse cosine of a negative one half in degrees and radians. Remember that the default for calculus is radians. So this says, what's the measure of the angle that, that has this cosine ratio? Well, remember, cosine is limited up here. It's the top half of the circle. Cosine is negative over here. So this is a negative 1. This is 2. That means this is going to be radical 3. Because this is radical 3, that means that's a 60. So that is going to be... If this were all the way to here, if I rotated all the way to here, that would be 3 pi over 3, and I back up 160 degree, so theta is going to equal 2 pi over 3, or 
120 degrees because it's 1 2 60s. Okay? Alrighty? That's how I manage it. I manage everything off of that horizontal axis, either adding to or taking away. Okay? Alright, another way to think about this is to convert to degrees is this is 2 times 60, which would be that 120 degrees. For example, 2, it says find the measure of the inverse tangent of a negative 1 over radical 3, and this time I just want it in radians because in big kid math we like to do just radians. So again I'm going to locate it. Remember that inverse tangent is located to 1 and 4. Tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant. So here's my reference triangle. Tangent is y over x. So that means this is a 30 degree angle. So this theta is going to be a negative pi over 6. It can't be all the way around 11 pi over 6. It can only be the positive or the negative rotation. So theta is a negative pi over 6. Okay. All right. The next thing that we're going to see is we review for our calculus our compositions of trig functions. So compositions of trig functions. And just like all other compositions, we start on the inside and we work our way out. Okay, so that's going to be start on the inside and we're going to work our way out. Alright, so for example, number three, I want to find the sine of the inverse cosine of three over five. Okay. So again, I'm going to start by drawing a picture. So I start on the inside. This says find the angle that has this ratio. Remember, inverse cosine is here and here. Cosine is positive over here. So this is going to be 3, this is 5, this is a Pythagorean triple, and there's the angle. This says find the angle. Here it is. Now it says do the sine of the same angle. Well, the sine is 4 fifths. We love drawing our reference triangles because they make this math so much simpler. Okay? All right, I have another example along these same lines. So example number four says find the tangent of the sine of 9 over 13. Okay? All right, same thing. I'm going to start with my inside. This is the inside. So remember that inverse sine is first and fourth. Sine is positive up here. So this is going to be theta. This is 9. This is 13. And if I do my Pythagorean theorem, 9 squared plus x squared is 13 squared. x is going to equal the square root of 88. So I'm going to add that to my drawing. And I can't do that math in my head. I actually did that math out on paper. But for right now, we just did it this way. So it says find the angle, here it is. Now do the tangent of that same angle. Well, tangent is y over x. So here's the other thing that I'm gonna tell you about calculus that's a little bit scandalous. If we have a radical in the denominator, we don't care, and we just leave it like that. So in big kid math, we no longer have to undo the radicals that are in the denominator. Isn't that fun? All right, I have one more example for us. We're going to use our grapher. So for example, number five, it says solve for x, okay? And I'm going to have the sine of x is equal to 0 0.7, and I'm going to go from 0, x, less than or equal to 2 pi. Well, the first thing you'll notice is this is not a special. And I know that because it's not a half, it's not radical 3 over 2, it's not 1 over radical 2, so this means I'm going to have to use my calculator. This is going to be used to set my window. 
So I'm going to graph two equations. I'm going to graph, my dog is saying hi, y is equal to the sine of x, and I'm going to graph y is equal to 0 0.7. To be able to graph trig, we need to make sure that your calculator is in radians. I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to enter the sine of x, and I'm going to enter 0.7. Now they told us they want us to go from 0 to 2 pi, so I'm going to go to my window. My x min is going to be 0. My x max is 2 second pi. My x scale is fine. Remember that sine oscillates between a negative 1 and 1, so I'm just going to make that be a negative 1, a positive 1, and I'm going to say graph. So here goes my sine function. Ooh, so slow. And there goes the horizontal line. So I have two solutions. So I'm going to do second calculate, five for intersect. Notice my cursor jumps right to the sign. Well, a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. So I'm going to cruise over to that point, enter, enter, enter. And it tells me that x is equal to 0.775. Then I'm going to do it again, second calculate, 5 for intersect, and again I'm going to trace and notice that it changed right there, the straight line, because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, enter, 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 and I get 2.366. So there are my two solutions in this interval, because that's all they care about. I'm going to graph that just to show my work. So there's my sign. There are my two points of intersection. There's the 0.775 and the 2.366. I showed my work. I got my answers. Ta-da, done. Okay. There are a couple of Pythagorean triples, just in case you care, if you don't remember, that are helpful to know. Sorry, that was the last thing I had written down on my paper. I have a 3, 4, 5, a 6, 8, 10, and a 5, 12, 13. Those are the ones that I memorize because it tends to make my right triangles easier if those numbers pop up. All right, my dears, that is the end of Chapter 1. Yay, hallelujah. Moving on to the next one soon. See you soon.